All right, so mono red phoenix, steamkin stuff. Um, the last couple of times I... The last couple of times I played this archetype, I was kind of unimpressed with it. Um, this deck felt like it was kind of an aggressive deck that wasn't quite fast enough to race the other linear things that go on in modern, but I'm always willing to give things another try here. So we're gonna take this specific configuration I believe came from Jerry Thompson or their podcast or something like something close to that. We're gonna jam a league with it here to wrap things up this evening. So Blood Moon, those cards kind of do two different things, Gregor. So I get that they're both cards that interact with your opponent's lands, but Blood Moon is a card that's kind of designed to screw people out of playing Magic, whereas Molten Rain is actually much better than Blood Moon on average against big mana archetypes. So I guess it depends on like what you're looking to beat, basically. Like, are you interested in beating... Are you interested in beating fair decks? Or are you interested in beating... Um, beating big mana decks. Yep, yep, everything will go up on YouTube as always. So I ditched two Arclight Phoenixes here, but my hand's actually kind of mediocre as far as getting the Arclights back. I don't have a lot of cheap spells to put them back into play here. Uh, Death Shadow went well. We had a lot of really sweet games. Thanks been a, a good night overall for sets of, sets of games of Modern. Played a lot of like what I could just describe as like actual quality games of magic. All right, this Faithless Looting is a great draw. It means if I find uh, a one mana spell here, we can get the Phoenixes back. And I did not find a one mana spell. I think I'm actually going to ditch these two. So I have this is spell number two. This would be spell number three. This would be spell number four. So actually, I'm going to ditch these two, and I'm going to elect to not pay the madness cost on this. Just going to let it go to the discard pile. And I'm going to play the Runaway Steam Can, and then next turn I can play a land, and then play Bedlam Reveler for four mana, and draw three cards. Not getting the Phoenixes out here isn't exactly the end of the world, because this thing in the ice card, after my opponent casts four spells, it would flip up and put the Phoenixes back in my hand anyway, so it's like not too big of a deal. Uh, all of my past streams get uploaded to my YouTube channel, Teron, and at the end of every video, I or at the end of every league, I always do a wrap-up segment. So if you want to hear me talk about the, the Mausoleum Secrets, I encourage you to check that out on my YouTube channel later. It'll be published tonight, probably about an hour, hour and a half from now. I'll hit publish on those after I'm uh, done streaming. This is the last league tonight. All right, so best laid plans gone to crap. Opponent looks to be playing the blue-red Arclight Phoenix deck, which has had a much more powerful draw than we have, so we are dead. When I play Dead Guy Ale in Legacy? Yeah, definitely. I like that archetype a lot, actually. I've top eight it. I've actually top eighted opens and like the legacy challenges and stuff like that with it. Oh, Graveyard Hate's not even that good against the blue-red Phoenix deck. It's like good against exactly their Arclight Phoenixes, so kind of mediocre against other things. I don't really have good sideboard cards here. I guess I'll bring in Anger of the Gods to like try and clear their birds, but this matchup seems pretty rancid for us. I think their deck's probably just a better linear deck than we are. Jack G1, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. I know there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Welcome. In fact, if you don't have a preferred Dead Guy Ale deck list, if you just wanted to say, hey, Jeff, play your Dead Guy Ale deck list, I actually have a Dead Guy Ale deck in my thing here that I was that I was rather fond of back when I was playing more Legacy. But if you have a specific build too that you like, I'd be happy, most likely happy to play what you would like to send in. And to resub so I could stone Forge Mystic after that game. God bless. Uh, there's Kaya in the sideboard. Yeah, there's a Kaya in the sideboard. There's a there's a Kaya and a Gideon ally of Zendikar. I love love me some Kaya. Okay, Kaya is wonderful. Well, I mean, here we are. All right, that's the second bird. Have you heard about my birds? This is same same thing as last time, right? We like turn one, put two Phoenix in the graveyard, and just like never can get them back. 
Not not having the blue cantrip makes it seem like a lot harder to get these birds back consistently. All right, let's move along. It's late. I'm not going to sit here and flop around. Late night chill. These people are great. Buy their stuff. These people, also great. Consider buying their stuff. Back to the magic. All right. A SRO's Majestic Beard. Thank you very much for the brand new tier one sub. Welcome, welcome. I appreciate the support. After like eight o'clock, the shill breaks get a lot of, get a lot, a lot shorter. Kara's, Kara's bad. They're authentic, right? Those people are great and you should buy their stuff. They... Those advertisers pay for the 40 hours I stream during the week. So like if I stream past my normal 35 to 40, they get shorter shill breaks. They're still, they're still scrolling down here. They're getting their money's worth. Yeah, the Lisa bet is great. So like mattresses are one of those things. There's... And as I become an adult and like not a broke college student anymore, it's just like you slowly realize that like the you get what you pay for mantra is like really more true with some things than others. And like mattresses is one of those things for sure. I never, I never, the, the thing that made me really appreciate my foam mattress for the first time was we, uh, it was the first magic trip I took actually after um after getting the mattress i was like well this hotel bed really sucks all right well this this hand is very reasonable our turn two is you know put a phoenix into play which is great spend your what's the what's the mantra spend your money where you spend your time don't 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 cheap out on your shoes your desk chair or your bed it's it's like a Delver Secrets with haste that can come back later. And there's also like three instants and sorceries in my graveyard already, so like we're moving our way towards this bedlam revler pretty quickly. All right, so what do I want to do here? A red venge vine. That's a neat way to think about it. I actually hadn't made that connection, but it makes a lot of sense. All right, so I get to trade a lightning bolt for like the front half of lingering souls here, basically. So I think that's fine for me. Probably bolt something at end of turn here as well. Your dead guy ale list, please. We'll do SROs. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. That one's going to be deader than a doornail here. Don't thought seize me. They have a fatal push here. They could kill the Arclight Phoenix. Oh, they didn't have a stop on the end step. They didn't. They have a fatal push and they didn't have a stop on their end step. Womp womp. Get wrecked. Do I think Arena is helping the streaming community? I mean, Arena is helping Magic in general in a fantastic way. For for context, for me as a streamer, my viewer numbers, and this is as someone who only streamed Modern and Magic Online as a full time job for like you know the better part of this year and for years part time before that, my numbers streaming standard on Magic Arena tend to be fifty to one hundred percent more viewers than when I stream Modern on Magic Online. Or than when I yeah sorry yeah, I said that right that worked out. Arena has 50 to 100% more people watching than Magic Online does for me. Yeah. 
Words. Words. Also, my my audience as a whole specifically had definitely taken to this standard format and arena very well. My my sub survey last I checked, like almost 86% of the people that are subscribed to my channel currently are interested in seeing arena content and, me, and me, or, uh, arena and standard content. Which kind of surprised me being an internal format player only for so long. So I'm gonna run away Steamkin here. I'm gonna Fiery Temper this. It might be right to play this after the Fiery Temper because they might Fatal Push the Steamkin in response to this. This is the best standard format in a long time. And I definitely think like things like the Arena Extension, for instance, help that a lot. Like Arena is a lot more accessible to new players, especially on Twitch, because not only is the standard card pool smaller, but you don't have to know the cards, you just mouse over them. Ravnica standard is consistently the best standard. You're not wrong. It's almost like good mana leads to good standard formats. Yeah, we had we had a 1,200 person host from Savit stand in, and actually way more people stuck around than I thought. We were we were up over 13 and 1400 for a long while there. Think of Arena brought formats like Modern Legacy Magic Online would be phased out. I don't think I think the the number of people left playing Magic Online if all of the formats on Magic Online were also on Magic Arena would be so small that Magic Online would cease to exist. So, but that being said, I don't think, I do not think those formats are coming to Magic Online anytime soon. Even if Wizards of the Coast wanted to bring Modern and Legacy to Magic Arena, which they probably don't even want to, even if they wanted to do that, they probably wouldn't feasibly be able to do it for a decade. The amount of the amount of time it takes to not only code the cards but also code animations is just huge. And don't get me wrong, there are definitely people out there that greatly prefer Magic Online to Magic Arena, but I definitely think they're in the minority. Yeah, I agree, J Boz. The the sub survey two has been the sub survey two has had a ton of good feedback of people saying they've liked the dual format days. So I think my my Monday to Friday doing two hours of magic online, two to three hours in the morning, then four to five of arena in the afternoon is gonna work out really well for me. I mean, magic in general is confusing if you don't know the cards. Modern, modern's very tough to follow as a new player. You think the arena team is that small that it would take that amount of time? No, I think it's just a huge undertaking. I think even with a largish team, it would take a very significant amount of time. The amount of programming hours it would take to backcode 25 years worth of magic cards plus animations for them is absurd. Speaking, speaking as someone who has inherited inherited a number of open source projects and like forked things and like worked with other people's code bases, you should never assume that doing something in a code base you haven't seen is going to be easy. Or even if you've seen it, that you haven't really worked with yourself. There's lots of, there's lots of gremlins that will be hiding. Can you imagine trying to build a modern legacy card pool as a player using the arena system? So here's the thing. It would actually be, it's actually, and this is something that people have said that they just don't get it. It's actually much, much easier and cheaper to build most modern decks on Magic Arena than it would be on Magic Online or in paper. Because the way the wild card system works, you get guaranteed wild cards every six booster packs that you open. Plus you could open wild cards past that. It's actually incredibly cheap. Think of a modern format where the absolute most you ever pay for a rare is $6. Because that's the most a rare can ever cost you. Because every six booster packs, you get a rare wild card guaranteed.
They need better consistent casual formats on Arena. And I mean, like, so as someone who streamed Magic and played a ton of Magic for a lot of time, um, they're non-rotating formats like modern like legacy these are formats that capture and attract people especially more casual players and players who really love brewing because these formats have deep card pools like i think arena already has a bright future and when a new non-rotating format gets introduced to arena next fall when standard rotates i think there's going to be there's going to be even more magic players getting into it that aren't already i think the last many of the last holdouts that haven't gotten into arena yet that are currently magic players will come in when there's a new non-rotating format to poke at I think Redemption can every part of Arena? I have no idea. In in my opinion, I almost hope that it's not. Just because, like, tying Magic Online to Redemption for so long is one of the reasons Magic Online's always been so expensive. Yes, they should block. So I, I'm basically signing up to trade this Fiery Temper and my Monastery Swiss Spear for three Spirit Tokens here, and I think that's a fine trade for me. What would you personally like the earliest set on the Arena non rotating format to be? Ixalan. I actually wrote uh, one of my articles on Cool Stuffing from three weeks ago now, I think. I talked about the new potential non rotating format and where I would like it to start. Don't you dare thought seize me. Have a heart. I also think so something they've talked about before too is that they've they've talked about introducing cards to modern in new sets that don't go through standard if they created a new non-rotating format they could do that they could create a new non-rotating format and then say hey all the cards in this master set are legal in this new non-rotating format and they could introduce older cards that people love from things like modern to arena and that new non-rotating format through methods like that they could be like all right we want we want snapcaster mage in this format or we want tarmogoyf in this format or whatever you know just random whatever random staple they're interested in having exist could exist that way This is a reason to maybe have kept a land in my hand last turn, but I'm actually like kind of happy. I'm actually like kind of happy they uh, they did that. So that way they don't shatter this now. And again, and like the, the whole world is just like their oyster, right? Like they, they make the rules. The company that makes the game also makes the rules. So they kind of do whatever they want, right? Well, Time Spiral was a standard legal set, and that standard was actually a huge mess. So I've elected not to jumpstart the Risk Factor here, because I'd like to just cast the Arc Light Phoenix. I think just casting Arc Light Phoenix here is probably fine. Yeah, I'm just going to cast Arc Light. And then there's a good chance these Risk Factors are going to start drawing us cards here. Because they're gonna their health total is gonna get hammered here. They're at going down to 12 from this hit, and like the shrine of burning rage is sitting in place, slowly ticking up. This card gets a counter every turn, and it gets an extra counter whenever we cast a red spell, and we can pay three and sacrifice it to burn them for however many counters are on it. Deal. Yeah, there's a there's a cool stuff ink article titled Don't Metagame Modern, written by yours truly. I think this card's actually to blame for part of the reason why the mag the current magic trigger rules in competitive magic are different. When this card was standard legal, the trigger rules stated that if your opponent missed a mandatory trigger, you had to remind them that it was supposed to happen. And like, it was just miserable as a competitive player. You'd be sitting there against like this mono red player that has no idea how their magic cards work. You'd be like, put a counter on your shrine at Burning Rage that's going to kill me. 
Put a counter on your Shrine of Burning Rage that's gonna kill me. Put a counter on your Shrine of Burning Rage that's gonna just like, just like super dead to this card. They always forget to put the counter on it. How do you become an author for cool stuff? Um, Evan Irwin is actually the person that contacted me about that gig or that I contacted. I forget at this point. I've been, I've been writing for them for a while. Rude, you're dead anyways. So I've got some birds. The best way people often ask, like, how do you get started making magic content? And the words of Shia LaBeouf, just do it. Just the best way to get started doing things like streaming on Twitch, just fire up your computer and start streaming yourself while you do it. Writing, start writing. Publish on a personal blog, make a self post on Reddit. Lots of, lots of different ways to, to get, get your content out there. And then if your content is good, someone's gonna approach you. Or once you have a bunch of content that you feel is good, if no one's approached you, you can go to places and be like, I did this, do you want me to do this for you every week? We do get to put a Phoenix into play on turn two here. We have to do like Morphos, Morphos, Tormenting Voice, ditch this, attack for three. Watsy can silence him. Yeah, TCC is the easily the biggest independent uh, content producer for Magic. Do it because you love doing it. Man, we are going to get this, this remand, this tormenting voice is about to get remanded. It's going to feel real bad. Will do, Captain Magar. Thanks for the support. So the discarding a card for a card like Tormenting Voice as an additional cost means I have to discard the card regardless of if this, if this resolves. So even if they counterspell me there, the Phoenix is still in my bin. Part of putting the Tormenting Voice on the stack is discarding the card from my hand. Faithless Lootings are pretty good here. So we're going to chain through a lot of my deck next turn, hopefully find another Phoenix to put into play. Hopefully there are control deck here. Oh no, opponent, please don't cast Blood Moon. How will I ever play Magic the Gathering if you do that? A just guy? Geist is Saint Trash. Okay. So I want to Mana Morphos before I get going here. Because I want to give myself the most looks to find a uh, find a Phoenix. And I'm going to go ahead and burn through everything here. Because we're probably going to cast Bedlam over this turn. I've got one, two, three, four. This will be five, six, seven. He was very good in standard. You are not you are not wrong. He was very good in standard. All right, so I think I actually just discard these and then I play a land, play the Swift Spear, play the Bedlam Reveler. Oh, I guess if I don't cast No, I already cast Manamorphose and Ritual, right? So I'm going to get the Phoenix back here. Right? I cast Manamorphose Desperate Ritual this turn. Yeah, so I can just ditch Ditch these, play this, play this, play this. Pretty, pretty decent turn three here for us. A little bit of loss value, but I kind of get to gas back up here. Yeah, kind of. It's not, not quite the gas we were hoping for. Feel like we got ripped off at the pump here. All right, your move, Yugi boy. That's all I got. Rude. I guess I can actually kind of use the extra land next turn. 
flashing back looting all that jazz. And like the fact that I haven't dealt any damage to myself with my mana is such a huge thing here. Let's actually play this out in case I find two madness spells. All right, let's find like two more Phoenixes here. Just get the whole boat. You have to like mill over from the next four cards in my deck here. Just like using these Faithless Lootings like awful Thought Scours. Just looking for Phoenixes and Fiery Madnesses here. And I have a third spell guaranteed to cast here. Um, Bin this, bin this. Cast this so I get that other bird back. This also triggers prowess and gives me a chance to find a third bird. Have you heard about my birds? I said a buh, buh, buh. My birds, a word. I said a bird. Maybe I'm actually supposed to keep the Manamorphos there. Yeah, I think I think not taking the Manamorphos there was a mistake, actually. All right, down to three. Yeah, maybe you get by. This is all I got. Yep, no worries. It's definitely hard to jump into modern if you're not familiar with everything that's going on. You know, there's like... 18 years worth of cards in this format. They go back a long time. Yeah, the Steamkin's a bit... We've not had a good Steamkin turn yet in this in this deck, in this uh, league, sorry. Yeah, I definitely should have kept the Manamorphose. Oh. Upstairs. <laughs> I always love when Geist of St. Trash lives up to its name. I always love when Geist of St. Trash lives up to its name. It's so wonderful. All right. What do I want to cut? I usually just trim Desperate Ritual against the Fair Decks, like board in Shrine and Risk Factor to grind a little bit. Get a little grindy. I'm going to bring in one Anger of the Gods, too, just to, like, kill Geist occasionally on the draw. This is match three of this league, right? Yeah, all right, I'm going to sit down. Sit down for these last couple. It's late, and I did legs at the gym today, chat. I'm tired, and I'm old. Enjoy the ride. What are you putting Molten Rain versus? Uh, big mana decks, decks like Tron, decks like uh, Valakut Titan, things of that nature. Decks that are trying to get a lot of lands to play quickly. Um, it just like doesn't do anything, right? I, I guess it like shifts through itself, which is probably fine. All right, Bedlam. Bedlam Reveler gives us gives us an end goal, basically, right? Gives us something to aim towards doing. I'm just gonna bolt their dome here. Just get some, get these instants of sorcery flown into my discard pile. Arclight Phoenix was a fantastical draw there. Please don't have a counter spell. Maybe I should cut these actually. If they have counter spells in post board, like if this gets countered, maybe they don't have counter spells in post board. Nobody knows. Well, that was a phenomenal draw. So this means I can get my Phoenix back this turn and be pretty close to, because uh, this is one spell and then Tormenting Voice, Ditch the Fiery Temper is two, three. Get my bird back. Really? Okay, okay. Interesting. Oh. 
So I got two instants and sorceries in my bin at the moment. Hopefully they tap out here. Sweet. So I get to Tormenting Voice, Ditch Fiery Temper. Fiery Temper is going to kill the Spell Queller, which will cast, uh, which will cast Manamorphose. And then I might actually be able to Bedlam Reveler this turn. Depending on what we draw here. I've got one, two, three. This will be four, five. Yeah, I can actually cast Bedlam. But I'm drawing three cards here, so I might not want to cast Bedlam this turn, depending on what we pick up. Hopefully we draw like three Arclight Phoenixes here and just put them all in the bin. The Monastery Whispers have been really good. There's only two of them. This card's been pretty impressive. It was good in the uh, in the street in the blue red build we played too. Uh, every Twitch streamer is automatically subscribed to themselves. This could have could have ended up worse for us. We get to bin the fiery temper and dome them for three here. So like they're going to thirteen and like they're getting attacked for nine. Sure, why not? Welcome to Thunderdome. Welcome to Modern, enjoy your stay. Six, that's a lot. I can see that being okay though. Now the one drop's been really, really important it feels like. And Soulscar Mage's text box is like not terrible. Bring, bring out your dead. I'm not dead yet. You will soon be, Grandpa. Calm down. <laughs> Does that mean my base salary from Twitch was ever subscription is worth? Yeah, the bulk the bulk of my income as a as a Twitch streamer comes from subscriptions. So like when I give that little quip about. You know, thanks for keeping me employed when people sub and resub. That's just not me being cheeky. That's me being genuine. People people who subscribe to my channel are the people that are the reason that I'm able to be here. They quite literally keep me employed. What would you say I should start upgrading the deck to find the money? Guilt Leaf Palaces should come first. Also, Nalaric, if you look at the deck list on my website currently, the, I, I've cut the Assassin's Trophies from the sideboard, which takes some takes some money off of it. If I expect them to have a copy of Path to Exile here, what's my best line? They're dead if they have nothing. The question is, do I play around Path to Exile? I can't block this, right? So just like the only line is it's just attack. Yeah, I can't can't block. Oh, temper is lethal through path. Is it? Oh, it is because these are both prowess. You're right. I'm dumb. Yeah, I'm super dumb. I like, I even, I even tanked, I even tanked and then clicked the wrong thing, did the wrong thing. Yep. Yep. Cause this is, this is, uh, this is four no matter how we slice it. So we're dead to a bolt now. Yeah, I deserve that. All right. So the deck should be two and one. We're going to play a game three here though. Wow. All right. Bolt. Spike. I deserved I deserved that, I suppose. Done done goofed. Alright, that's fine. We get to take game three on the play.
Been waiting so long to think of a funny comment for our nine month anniversary and I missed our Twitch favorite. What's going on, Dennis Lettuce? Thanks for the 10 month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Oh, all right, I deserve that. Neko Marbra, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. I appreciate that. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month. And CVC91, thank you very much for the brand new Prime support. Thanks for shipping your Bezo Bucks this way this month. And Gabriel Paint, thanks for re-upping for the 11th month in a row. The Twitch Prime sub train keeps a rolling. Explosive Catabug coming back for the 10th month. Thanks for checking back in, folks. Remember, even for my new subs and my returning subs, be sure you fill out the sub survey. For existing subs, it should have been emailed to you last night to your Twitch email. If you didn't get that there, pop into the subs Discord, and it's currently pinned in the general channel there. Yes, it was definitely Geist of St. Traft and not me being an idiot that won that game. That was definitely, definitely what happened. Great Ginger King with the brand new Twitch Prime support. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for shipping the Bezo Bucks. You know, we have a lot of mountains. Oh, you know what I messed up? I forgot to put all my white border mountains on the stack. That would have been a good time. I have all my, my tilty white bordered mountains that are mismatched that we could have put in here. For those of you that enjoy evening streams, I'm going to be back again tomorrow night doing some more modern and I think oh, at least one Legacy League here on Magic Online. Probably start sometime about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, Central Standard Time. Get him. Get him. Get my, cycle through my deck, get my prowess trigger. Yeah, yeah this deck just doesn't feel very good. It, it feels much, much worse than the, than the, what's it called? The, uh, Oh, I'm like, I have the blue-red build that we played a couple of times. And like, the blue-red build, honestly, didn't even feel that impressive. Trying to, like, get these Phoenixes back consistently without having access to... Excuse me. Without having access to blue cantrips feels bad. <laughs> turtle, turtle power is going to catch up to my feedback loop there in about a half a second and find out. Yes, yeah, I agree with that, White Seal. This build seems much more susceptible to Graveyard Hate. I think I would definitely recommend the blue-red configuration of this archetype as opposed to this uh, this mono-red one. Yeah. You know what? I've been going for almost six hours. I'm a little bit tired. Really not feeling this deck. I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Um, I'll be back tomorrow evening, about four or five in the evening, with uh, three or four modern leagues and then one or two legacy leagues. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll catch you all later on later. Remember, if you enjoy my standard content, I'll be back with that um, Tuesday. I'm taking Monday off because the kids' daycare is closed, so I need to stay home and hang out with them. They are not quite old enough to be left to their own devices. Um, so I'll be back tomorrow night with more Magic Online content, back on Tuesday with more Arena content. And remember, if you're a sub, go fill up my sub survey because I want to hear your opinion on my content on my channel. So thanks for hanging out, folks. I'll catch all y'all around later.